The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Meridian Fire Department Idaho on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus job number 35954. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new fire apparatus. A couple of views here, this is going to be the front section. We'll move around through the entire truck, uh, look at the side of the full truck. Focus in now on the cab section. Move now to the body section. Take a look at the rear of the apparatus. Moving now around to the passenger side, full side of the vehicle. Focus in on the front cab area and then back to the body section. Let's start now with some information regarding your vehicle and we'll start with the front bumper area. Let's first start with your bumper extension. As we move to the very bottom section in the front, you'll have a hitch receiver point for your extrication tools and winch, and also an electric power outlet. As we move around to the side bumper extension, you'll find a recessed emergency warning light. As we move to the corner of the front bumper extension, you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. There are dual air horns on the front bumper face. As we move up to the top section of the bumper extension, you'll find a storage location for your TNT tools, 2D handle gain you access into this space where the tools are stored, and then also hose reels. On the outer edge on the driver's side, you'll find your mechanical siren. Let's take a look at some close-ups with the uh, hatch in the open position. You can see tool mounting locations and then also your hose reels. As we move around to the other side, this is going to be your mechanical siren. Let's go ahead and move around to the front section. Directly behind the Pierce logo is where the latch release mechanism is to gain access under the hood. As we move around to the side of the vehicle on the driver's side, let's go ahead and go inside the driver's space. First, starting with the door panel, affix to the door panel safety and warning placard information regarding your vehicle. Also, door lock and latch combination here, electric windows for all four window controls, and then also a grab handle. Let's move from this location just downward to the step well area. As we look into the step well, you'll find an air inlet and then also your shoreline inlet, which is a 20 amp auto eject plug. This will provide shoreline power to those additional plugs throughout the apparatus. When plugged into shoreline power, your auto charging system will activate, battery charger, and then also display the charge status. As we move to about the right ankle of the operator, uh, this is going to be your logo, manufacturing from Pierce, indicating the date of manufacturing, five-digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, VIN number. For your maintenance team, all of the components, fluid capacities, and fluid types for those components and the amount that uh, is in each of those items. As you move up to about the left knee floorboard area, you're going to find your mechanical siren foot pedal. And then once again at the left knee, this is your tech module, engine, transmission, ABS diagnostic port, and display port connection for your maintenance team. Also switches for ABS diagnostics and engine diagnostic. This is also for the operator where you're going to find your regen inhibit and DPF regen switches. Let's move to the dash area. As we move, you'll find your master battery switch right about the left knee of the operator. Moving up onto the dash panel, you'll find your four-way or hazards. And as we move downward, you'll find your start ignition switch and then also a switch labeled EM, which stands for emergency master. This will engage or disengage all emergency lights with one button. Headlight switch and a panel switch lay to brighten or dim lights within the panel preview. On the opposite side, high idle indicator and also switch. Moving up to the gauges, you're going to find transmission oil, def level, and water temp. On the opposite side, we're going to find volts, fuel, front air, and rear air. In the center, your tachometer and speedometer. Diagnostic information will display above and below uh, the speedometer, including the digital readout. Let's move just to the right of the steering column. Let's move just to the right of the operator position where you'll find this yellow diamond. This is the pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. 
Moving to the right, you'll find a display screen. This is your Pierce command zone. Tremendous amount of information right here at your fingertips. See your owner's manual for more information. Allison transmission pad, push button, digital readout. As we move back, this is also a touch screen and then also function buttons located underneath for hard buttons. As we move to the Allison transmission pad, once again, digital display. Let's move up to the switch area where you'll find your aerial master, aerial PTO, generator PTO, hydraulic tool, and then also your stabilizer cameras. As we move down, you'll find your engine brake on and off, a setting switch for low, medium, and high, front wheel lock, off-road traction, and mirror heat. As we move to the next switch panel, you'll find your high beam flash, your opticom, alarm silence, siren brake, and tire chains. Moving further down, you'll find your front basket flood, under basket flood, platform leveling, and load manager. Moving further to the right and slightly upward is where you're going to find the mirror control for the flat and convex mirror on the passenger and driver side of the vehicle. Climate control, heat, air conditioning, and defrost located in the very center area. As we move in the center top section, roof area, you'll find your seat belt information, red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted, green, they are belted and in the seat. You'll also find an open or a, a jar, do not move your apparatus light indicator. And then at the very top section, we'll find this yellow placard indicating the height of the vehicle, 12 feet, 6 inches, length, 47 feet, 4 inches, gross vehicle weight rating, 82,000 pounds. You'll also find some switch panels here for the emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. Moving just to the right, you're going to find your traffic advisor and additional switch panel regarding your driver side cab scene, passenger side cab scene, future switch location if it's necessary, driver side body scene, passenger side body scene, and then rear scene. Let's move slightly to the right again where you're going to find your code 3 siren and PA speaker module. Back out to the front wheels where you're going to find Goodyear tires, Alcoa wheels, and a visual sight gauge for the front axle. Moving uh, to the rear cab section, uh, easily accessible with a gloved hand and they are door locks and also grab handles for gaining entry and exit. Moving inside the cab space, we're going to find two rear facing SCBA style seats. In between the two of those seats is where you're going to find a lift and turn latch, gains you access to the rear portion of the engine for your daily checks for oil and transmission. As we move to the rear cab, you'll find fold down SCBA seats and then also a compartment, roll-up compartment door, uh, accessible here, two shelves, LED lighting, and then also at the very top section, you'll find when plugged into shoreline power, an also generated outlet here for 20 amp house plug. Directly behind the cab is where you'll find long-handled tool storage and a pegboard. As we move downward, you'll find the fill location, def tank, blue cap. As we now look into the compartments on the body section, you'll see at the very top section, side facing floodlight, and then also at the very top section, you have a cord reel, 200 feet, 20 amp electrical cord. There is a reel rewind push button located here, and right next to it is also the information regarding your PTO generator, uh, regarding your Harrison uh, amps for lines one and two. Also, as we move through, you'll find uh, shelves that move inward and outward. Those shelves are controlled through locks located on the outer edges and also release mechanism. As we move down to the very bottom section, release mechanism on this shelf is going to be on the lower right side of the shelf area. Moving back up to the very top section, this compartment houses some electronic devices. This is your battery charger, which when plugged into shore power will become activated and also will activate your air compressor, which will maintain brake pressure. You'll also find a switch panel block located here. We've got a few images of that next. And at the very top section, you can see your stabilizer camera. This is going to be the front stabilizer. Moving now to the G1, this is for your generator. This is the panel I just referenced a few seconds ago. And then also close up here of your uh, 12 volt battery charger. Once again, when plugged into shoreline power, these two items are active. Let's take a look at some warning placards here. This is a crush hazard because of those items moving inward and outward for the stabilizer, there is the possibility of crush. That's why we have a warning placard located here. As we move to the next compartment at the very top section, you'll find a pullout tray style. It tilts downward. There are two release mechanisms on the right and left side of the shelf area. 
As we move down, a pull-out tray at the bottom, release locate on the lower right, and then also a shelf in this compartment. Let's move to the next compartment directly over the axle. You'll find SCBA bottle storage for three SCBA bottles here. I'd also like to point out this warning placard. Let's go ahead and go over that warning placard next. This is regarding your vehicle is a non-insulated, therefore electrocution hazard is why we have the danger placard. As we move through, you'll also find long-handled storage here. This is going to be through the through compartment. As we move down to the uh, rear axle, you'll find Alcoa wheels and then also Goodyear tires. There's a tandem axle system here. Moving now to the compartments, we have a pull-out and tilt downward tray. Once again, those release mechanisms are on the right and left side. Moving further back, you'll find in between the two axles, SCBA bottle storage and also a side-facing emergency warning light. Moving to the very last compartment, all compartments do have dry deck material, ramp compartments on these, and also LED lighting. This is your ultra low sulfur diesel, it's the silver cap. As we move now to the very rear of the axle, you'll find an additional SCBA bottle storage location. Let's move further back to one of the compartments at the rear, where you'll find a pull-out tray, adjustable shelf, and at the very top section, you'll find the stabilizer camera. Release mechanism for this tray, once again located on the lower right side. As we look underneath the truck, you'll find you have a 10,000 pound maximal allowable winch rating and then also 12 volt access. Right next to that also are your stabilizer pads. There's one to the rear and then also one in the front section. As we move around to the rear of the apparatus, let's take a look with the compartments in the open position. This is gonna be your ladder storage. Let's start with a few items within this area. First, let's start once again with the electrocution hazard. Once again, never approach or contact power lines with any part of this equipment and keep 50 feet from any voltage if it's unknown. Let's move now into the stabilizer control area. This is a warning placard regarding aerial stability hazard in reference short jacking the vehicle on each side. You'll also find an emergency stop push button, also an override which requires you to lift the protected override switch to gain access. In addition, with a power switch for your stabilizers, as we look to the bottom, you'll find the stabilizer control module. It is tethered. As we move downward, we've got a few warning placards I'd like to go over. First, let's start at the very top section with a warning regarding a fall hazard, never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. Also, as we move downward, we'll find a warning regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. And then just to the right, you'll find these attached to the rear frame rail. This is for direct pull access only. Also, we have an inclinometer for left to right. You want to operate within the green area. As we move further down, you'll find the aerial inlet. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ladder storage location. We'll start on the left-hand side of aerial storage for your ladders, starting first with a two section 35, an additional two section 35, 10 foot folding, and also a two section 24. On the passenger side, 16 foot roof, there are two of those, correction three, and then also a 24 foot two section. Let's look down to the bottom of the pan door here. This is the aerial drain, inch and a half ball valve located just inside this pan door. As we move just underneath the rear bumper, you'll find this is not rated as a towing hitch, although it's designed to attachment point for your receiver for your winch there is an electric outlet right next to it. Traffic advisor and backup camera at the very top section. General view here of all compartments open on the passenger side. Let's start at the rear, first with uh, a warning regarding stabilizers and also crush injury regarding the warning placard. As we move inside the compartments, adjustable shelving and then also a pullout tray on the lower right, the release is located on that lower right hand side. Let's go ahead and move directly behind the rear axle where you'll find a 10,000 pound maximal allowable wrench rating. This is the receiver and also electrical outlet for your portable winch. SCBA bottle storage just to the rear of the axle. As we move inside the top compartment, you'll find generated and also shoreline outlets. There are four located here. As we move forward, you'll find those SCBA bottle storage location. We do have protector on the bottom section of that storage location. Also, three additional bottle storage locations in front of the rear axle. As we move to the center section, you'll find a pull-out and tilt-down tray. Once again, release mechanisms right and left side. Also, bottle storage in between the two rear axles and also a emergency warning light midsection. Long-handled tool storage, same access point from the passenger as you have on the driver's side. And then also, once again, that warning regarding electrocution hazard, the equipment is not insulated. 
Let's continue through the next set of compartments. First, we'll find adjustable shelving. This is the through compartment, also adjustable and pull down tilt out shell and fall out in the very bottom section of pull out tray. I would like to point out a warning placard in the vicinity of this area. This is directly in front of the rear axle. Extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures do uh, exist. Be cautious where you choose to park your vehicle. Let's move forward to this compartment at the very top section, the stabilizer camera, and then also a stabilizer compartment at the very top section. Inside, you'll also find shoreline and generated outlets. As we move through the next compartment, this happens to have your reel located, 200 foot electrical cord reel. Once again, there's also a push button, same configuration and layout as we have on the driver's side. Once again, 220 amp. This tray does pull outward. It does have a vertical pegboard located on it. And at the very bottom section, you have an additional pull-out tray. Release mechanisms both right and left side. Let's go ahead and move now into the cab area. We'll start at the rear section of the cab. Once again, we have a long handled tool storage location at the rear section of the cab. As we move inside the cab area, you'll find affixed to the door panel all of our safety and warning placard information. Also at the hinge point, you'll find a, gri a red grab handle for getting access in and out of the cab. As we look overhead, you'll find push on or off, white or red lens lights, and also your air conditioning. forward facing SCBA seat. Let's go ahead and move now into the officer seat. Once again, affixed to that door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, window control, and a grab handle. Your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system, an airbag located in the front bolster area. Uh, this is gonna be a warning placard regarding not mounting any equipment within this area. As we move just up onto the dash area, you'll find 12 volt access. This happens to be barrel style. Moving just to the left of this location, you'll find your push to talk for your radio, PTT. As we move to the floor, you'll find a foot pedal. This is for the mechanical siren. And then back up to the dash area, you'll find three barrel style outlets also. Let's go ahead and move overhead in the officer position. Push on and off white or red lens light. Also, we do have some switch panels located here. Um, this is gonna be your driver's side body scene passenger side body scene, and siren brake, which is the one located in the red. When any of these switches have been activated, you'll find the light in the switch will illuminate, indicating that it's been activated. Let's move just to the left of this location. We have additional storage locations, and then we also have the squelch and volume control for your intercom system module. A digital readout for your speedometer. The next set of images are gonna be that from the undercarriage area, just for general reference uh, for your apparatus. As we look at some of the images, I'll point out this is the reservoir for your hydraulic tilt for your cab. Stabilizer pads, and then also your slide-in receiving winch location. LED lights around the exterior for perimeter lighting. Folding wheel chocks. And then lastly, this is going to be an additional uh, pad for your outrigger stabilizer. Let's go ahead and move uh, to the top of the ladder section. We'll identify a few items within this area. First, let's start with the access panel located at the rear section of the aerial device, also commonly used as a step to gain access onto the top area. Lift and turn latch gains you access into this. This is for your aerial overrides, which will control the ladder controls for extend, rotate, up and down. We do have a warning regarding tip hazard in regards to short jacking your apparatus. As we move inside, we'll talk a little bit about your three section ladder. It is a 100 foot bucketed aerial. As we move to the front section, let's talk a little bit about the control module located on the left side of the vehicle. 
you have an intercom system, push button intercom, and volume control. As we move downward, you'll find your emergency stop, and I would like to point out to the left on the cover area, significant amount of safety information, and then also aerial operation information. We'll go over those in just a moment. This is your intercom system with volume control, push to talk. Once again, start stop here for your emergency stop, push button. Also, you have tracking lights, front basket lights, and aerial speed, slow, normal, and fast. A manual leveling for your bucket, and then also under bucket AC lights, and then also emergency hydraulic power. As we move to the nozzle control on the left-hand side for stream, right and left, and lower and raise, also ladder control for extend, retract, right, left, lower, and raise. Let's move to the lid now. I would like to point out your vehicle does meet NFPA 1911. That is the information regarding the specification. As we move to the right for your 100-foot steel aerial platform and a 35-mile-an-hour wind, waterway dry information and also waterway charged information. We do have nozzle reaction information located in this section here. What I would like to point out at the very bottom, there is an asterisk section. Reference this for any type of freezing of your aerial device when it comes to cold weather package. These are your warning and danger placard regarding the use of the aerial device. Let's go ahead and take a look from the rear section of the aerial moving toward the front bucketed area or basket area. We have a 16 foot roof on the inside fly. Hand tool mounted on the top section of the fly. As we move inside, you'll find additional storage locations. Let's point out some safety and warning placards. We do have, once again, that aerial platform load chart per NFPA for waterway dry, waterway charge, and also monitor nozzle positions. I'd also like to point out some warning regarding fall restraints and then also attachment points, which you'll find throughout the area of the device. As we move inside, you'll find your command zone on the right, ladder control in the center, and then additional light and also controls on the left, including the emergency stop, and then aerial speed and manual basket leveling. We do have 120 VAC 20 amp outlet at the very top section of your aerial device. This device does actually disconnect and move, that's why it's on a tether. As we move to the right, you'll find your command zone Tremendous amount of information. Once again, see your owner's manual for more information. This is the intercom system with volume control. It is passive. As we move, we have two door access locations on the right and left side of the vehicle. I would like to point out a few things regarding the life ladder. This is a fall hazard. And then also the life eye, which is at the very bottom section. As we move up to the far right, this is the life winch um, for tip hazard and then also as we move down for the life support fall hazard information. Please see the owner's manual for more information regarding these devices. Let's move to the front nozzle now. We have your master stream device, TFT. You also have an inch and a half discharge and then also a two and a half discharge. Let's take a look with the ladder in the upright position exposing the dunnage area. As we move through the dunnage area toward the front of the truck, this is where you're gonna find your generator. As we move further forward, you'll find the aerial hydraulic location for fill. And then also in the very top section dunnage, you'll find your TNT rescue tool main power supply. As we move to the roof itself of the cab, this is a non-walking surface and that's why we have these placards indicating that it is a non-walking surface because of slip hazard. Congratulations, Meridian Fire Department, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 35954. If you have any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.